Hello Internet! Uh, I just received this in the mail. This will be a great unboxing. It is the unboxing of uh, the prototype of my board game Inca Trail. Now in the past I've designed uh, many many board games uh, just for fun with no great pretension. They were always cute and decent, sometimes much too complex, sometimes not really thought through, you know, just for fun. This, however, is the first time that I got such good, such great uh, uh, encouragement and reviews and comments that I went ahead and I um, designed a professional looking prototype on the Game Crafter website. Uh, so that's free, uh, free, pr free publicity for them right there. Uh, it was a long, grueling, complicated process, uh, but in the end, uh, very well done. That that website is, is very well done. You can really customize everything you need. There's a huge variety of uh, products that are fully customizable. Uh, and uh, I was able to make this prototype, which I intend to... Actually, I have no idea what I intend to do with it. Um, I am making this video in English, uh, same as the game. I also designed the, uh, designed the, the game in English. Uh, yes, it is. it is almost dinner time my cat is telling me that uh, is the wrong moment to make a video but you know too bad for her um, I designed the game in English uh, and I'm making the video in English uh, just in case I, I decide to ever do I don't know a uh, Kickstarter about this project so I'll be very glad that my official unboxing is in English there because the, it, it can therefore be uh, be shared with a, a, a greater audience. But fret not, my uh, French-speaking um, friends, um, if I ever do make a Kickstarter um, event out of this campaign, out of this project, then uh, a French version of the game will be one of the very first, earliest stretch goals uh, on the project. Um, because, yes, I intend to share that with uh, as many people as I as I can. So um, I hope I'm framed correctly here. If I'm not, if I've been talking to you like this the whole time, never mind that. As long as this is in frame. So there we go. Great unboxing. Let's see if uh, it looks as neat as it did on the Game Crafter. Let's see if all of the uh, punch out cards came out okay. Let's see if everything's in there. Let's see if it's as playable as uh, it's supposed to. All right. And here we go. Here we have it. Uh, Inca Trail. Uh, a great uh, co-op board game by Jean-François Bibot. Yeah, that's me. There's my little company, Stratégie. a real registered company, not just a little logo there for fun. And wow, 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 look at that, all the little stats from two to four players. I reckon you could also play it solo as well. Uh, age is 10 and up, 60 minutes, everything looks nice. Look at back here, uh, my little uh, my little ages uh, 0 to 3 forbidden, or as I like to call it, uh, no fewer than four tank tank can play this game. And there you go, and uh, here's the little concept of little wheel that is a uh, central uh, to to the game. Picture of the board and a little text there that I will read some other time if you don't mind. All right, well let's uh, let's unseal this. And yes, this picture, you know, great, uh, of of course, heavily doctored and um, modified and embossed and whole bunch of special effects uh, were applied to this to this picture but initially this picture uh, came from my very own uh, trip to Peru so this is a little caldera lake that you can uh, find at the very top of the of the Salcante actually the Salcante is right there the Salcante mountain which is a which is a concept that you can find in the game. So yes, the a lot of research went into uh, the uh, the thematic material of this game. Be why? Because I was there, so it was easy to learn a whole bunch about uh, about the Inca and the uh, and the uh, various ways of reaching the Machu Picchu. Just uh, a bit of background on the game. It is indeed it's a co-op game. It's a game in which uh, the players work together to um, 
to um, to help the uh, the Inca survivors flee from their uh, conquered uh, capital city of Cusco uh, and flee towards the safety of the Machu Picchu. And to do that, uh, they can use one of three trails, the Inca Trail, the Salcante Trail, or the Laris uh, Trail. So all of that is very uh, neat and factual. Uh, and uh, and yes, yeah, so it, it represents the uh, the conquest of the Inca Empire by the uh, by the Spanish conquistador. And uh, yes, if, if the cat has enough patience, we will go through with this. Great unboxing. Looks like we have some paper here. Same type of paper that we had in the box. What is this? Uh, this game contains laser cut components. Laser cut items. Minus sorts of blah blah blah. Yes, oh, very neat. That's a little note from, from the game crafter about uh, soot and a campfire smell. Uh, yes. And I can vouch for that. It does indeed smell not only like a new game, but it does have that campfire smell that they are warning me about. That is a very nice thing that uh, I can't share with you, of course, via video, but it's a neat concept. The fact that my game smells burnt for some reason. Uh, there we go. First component, we have little stickers. This was unfortunate. I wish that I didn't have to do this. Uh, but uh, this is for for uh, the making of the dice. The game comes with uh, with custom dice. There we go. We can see them. They have little ind indentations. They, uh, there's a cl there's a clear little square. It's uh, it's uh, yes, cat. Yes, you are exi as excited as I am. Um, yeah. So this is to apply the stickers here. Uh, why is it like that? Why uh, are the faces of my dice not actually printed on? Why are they not engraved? Or why is it not directly on the... Why do the players have to make their own dice? It's a matter of cost. Uh, it would have cost, I don't know, a, a full, I don't know, twenty dollars more uh, to have my, to, to, to have actual custom dice printed on, engraved on. Uh, yes, it was a matter of uh, trying to keep this uh, the, uh, the cost manageable. This was already quite expensive. Printing a single copy of this was quite cost cost prohibitive. Um, if I ever do make a Kickstarter campaign out of this, if I ever do publish this myself, uh, I will uh, unfortunately not deal with the game crafter. I just gave them high praise and I gave them uh, some free publicity at the beginning of my video. Yes, but. Facts are facts, and reality is what it is. Um, if you ever mass-produce a board game, I'm sorry, you have to deal with China. That's that's just that's just how business works. Uh, and if that were the case, then uh, yes, another very early stretch goal of a Kickstarter campaign would be actually printed dice. No one needed to apply little stickers on the dice yourself. Uh, what's more, uh, you need to follow some very specific instructions. Uh, in the uh, in the instruction manual, w which we'll see in a minute, uh, about how to build the dice, because not all the dice must be built the exact same way. So there's a very specific chart in the booklet that tells you first take one white die and uh, uh, apply a copy of this face, this face, this face, and then this face, this face, and then take another die and then apply this face, this face, but not this face and this face. So they must be built very specifically. All the dice. So yes, we have all these stickers here. Uh, obviously, we can see some some faces are, are white, which is fine. I guess we don't need those as long as all of the faces that I do need are here. The little double arrows. Yes, the little chakana. This is called this is called the chakana. Is the Inca cross? It's an important uh, aspect of Incan culture, which I saw I saw over there. It's part of the game. And there we go, the little conquistador, uh, the little conquistador swords, and the little uh, Christian uh, uh, cross to symbolize the uh, the rise of the uh, Spanish morale. Uh, so there we go, first item, this little uh, this little baggie with my little stickers. They came out quite nice. They uh, they seem to be heavily folded. You see, there's creases folded all the way as if they, they came like rolled like this 
which is fine, I guess. None of that will show once they're on the dice. So yes, I will not apply all these stickers on the dice right here now live on camera. It, it will be a three hour video if I do this. Now let's see, can, can we all, can we see this? Can we, I, I think we can. We've got the dice, they're bigger than I thought, which is, hey, that's nice, that's neat. My board, my board has uh, some very specific areas on, on it, on, onto which these dice must go, so everything was all measured properly uh, digitally when I designed the thing, so obviously the dice are big, but my board and the spaces on the board must be equally big. Uh, I guess I made sure that they were. We've got little maples. Maples, they are yellow. They are orange, yellow, golden, orange, yellow-ish. Why? Um, uh, because that's, yeah, that's the reason they are orange, yellow, golden-ish. Because I thought it was neat. You know, gold, Inca, it all makes sense. We've got a certain amount. I forget exactly how many, but I'm sure that the correct amount is there. These are the Inca. These are the little Inca people that are trying to reach the Machu Picchu. And these are the... let's call them evil. <laughs> They're not evil per se, but in the game they are because uh, they work against the players. They are the evil conquistador uh, that are trying to attack the Inca. So the maples of different shapes, different colors obviously. So we've got some great charcoal, um, uh, taller maples for the Conquistador, six of them. And uh, here we've got little, uh, like, screws, uh, uh, rivets, uh, thingamajigs. I think that's the proper term, thingamajigs. Uh, they are for, well, you'll see, you'll see. Uh, we have some more goodies here. Oh, well, look at all this. Look at the colors. Some are reflective, others are not exactly as I selected so they're nice and distinctive and they were also cheap hey terraforming mars we've got the exact same little cubes as terraforming mars a very nice game if you are not familiar with it i hardly recommend it we've got okay so these are resources we've got gold for well uh, spoiler for gold this is gold resources We've got uh, orange, that is for uh, corn. So orange is corn. Orange is corn. So no, these are not corn people. They, they just happen to be orange like the corn. There we go. And we've got a black for weapons. These are weapons. Weapons that the Inca will use to fend off the conquistador. Uh, and of course we've got little wooden cubes, brown wooden cu cubes for... No, they're not for wood, actually, we do not... Hey, we have a, we have a guest. Hello, kitty. Uh, what is that? What is that? Oh, llamas. Yes, brown is for llamas. That's good enough for me. Uh, there we go, brown llamas. And what else do we have? Oh, yes, of course, green. Something that... Uh I learned also from visiting the area, green is for coca, the coca leaves, so green because they're leaves, because, they're, because it's a plant, the coca leaves, a very important part of the uh, Incan and Peruvian culture altogether, uh, and yes, it is indeed what it sounds like, it is indeed what uh, cocaine comes from, it's what also what um, the, uh, the very same cocaine that used to be in Coca-Cola, this is it, this is... This is the leaf, this is the plant from which the famous drug comes from. And yes, I have consumed such pl uh, um, said plant over there, which is perfectly normal over there. Uh, when you take it in small doses, there is nothing uh, more inoffensive. In fact, it is known to combat um, altitude sickness. Is it true or not? I don't know. It seems like it is. But uh, anyways, you would need to uh, ingest a, uh, an, an industrial amount of coca leaves in order to actually get any sort of a drug-induced buzz. That's why it is perfectly legal. It is all but impossible to actually um, commit any sort of crime just by consuming coca leaves. Uh, and we have also... Um, 
little little hockey pucks there, uh, which are used for for one-time very specific placements on the board. This, I, if I remember correctly, this one is for uh, marking the Spanish morale. This one is for something else, and I think this one also is for something else. Shows how much I remember of my own game. All right, uh, we have our first punch out. Uh, with the, with the same warning telling me that uh, this game might smell like a campfire. Very neat. Let's see how the punch out came out. Oh, it's shiny. I didn't expect that. I didn't pay for that. There we go. Very neat. And let's see how easily it, it, it punches out. Look at that. How nice is that? Now, how how hard? Oh my! It, it it really does. It really smells. Now, how hard was that to actually design this? Quite quite so. I had to learn vector graphics. If you don't even know the existence of vector graphics versus raster graphics, then I'm not even. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna get into that. That'll be a discussion for another time. But yes, I had to learn vector graphics. Uh, which I never, I I could never, I could, I could never figure out the purpose of vector graphics in the past. Well, now I have. It makes total sense to me now. So I had to learn vector graphics. I had to download, install, learn a whole new program for making vector graphics. And uh, the little, um, oh, oh, there's a name for them. The little. Um, gee, well. There are tiny little microscopic, like one or two millimeter um, uh, nudges here along the edge of every single cut piece. If uh, if there weren't any such a little space, the whole pieces, uh, you know, the whole piece would just fall through. So these little pieces they hold the thing in place until I punch them out. These little spaces are essential because, like I said, otherwise the piece would just fall through, and it would fall through into the innards of the machine, the laser machine that actually cut this. So, uh, so the Game Crafter has some very specific instructions when you designed this on your computer using vector graphics, it's up to you, it is not up to them, it is up to you to actually plan for these tiny little, tiny little indentation to make sure that the pieces don't fall through. See, essentially it would do that. It would do that into the machine, and I would get an empty piece. I would get an empty slug there uh, if I didn't put the little indentations myself. So every single little piece has to have indentations, uh, which I had to put myself. So yes, very time-consuming. Well, it's not when you look at this. It is when you look at this. I have some pretty big pieces of cut out in addition to the tiny one there so that was a small size this was the smallest size I think and this is their biggest size and look at this we've got the wheels the wheels that we saw on the back of the uh, of the box they are central to uh, to the uh, to, to the whole mechanic of the game it's very neat boy does it ever smell like burning and there we go, we got all the colors, all the arcs, some small, some big, all the different sizes. We've got some little um, square little uh, chips. Double sided, yes. I mean, the, the arcs are double sided, uh, yes, it lines up. The, we got a big wide orange one, and on the other side, big wide orange ones. But uh, the little squares, they're double sided, and they're, uh, they're, not the same. See, uh, they're not the same thing. Here's a nine. And a 2 on the other side, a 2 with a 10, and all of these have 1, so it's all, it's all thought through, it's all very essential. And yes, uh, our little uh, rivets, they are for, well let me punch out one of the wheels, well, it's coming up by itself, see, see how we've got the little, the tiny little um, notch, notches that are holding things on, there we go, easy to punch out. Uh, these little rivets are for going through the hole here, which, yes, it is the perfect size. Uh, like this. But before I do that, I have to put in a little arrow. Uh, there we go. There's one. Little arrow. 
Oh, see? The hole, these holes, the hole in, in the middle of the arrow, um, I put that hole uh, on my uh, design itself, and I did not put any notches. So, therefore, the hole in the middle, that did fall through the machine. It did. And I was fine with that. I don't need the hole, obviously. So, uh, those little holes, they fell through the machine, and fine with me. That was the whole plan. These arrows are quite tiny. They are not easy to punch out. There we go. No problem. No breakage. We have a little arrow here. And our wheel. And it goes like this. One part on top. Now, according to their notes, these rivets should be big enough to fit through two layers of cardboard. I sure hope that's true. I don't know, I'll have to test that further. Seems like it's awfully tight. But, yes, um, I'm confident it'll work. So, we, we, there we go, we have little arrows here. We have, we, we have a little arrow that will turn along the wheel. And these arcs, these little arcs here, uh, they go on top of your wheel, so you can obtain other arcs in which you can then put on top of your wheel to add more colors and more, there you go, for, for example, like this. Oh wow, perfect fit. Or this, or anywhere you want. Uh, there we go, so first little hiccup. I don't know if the little rivets, well, the, if the female part of, of the rivet can fit through the hole. It's an awfully tight fit. Oh, there we go, there we go, it, it, it does fit. It does fit. And this should fit as well. It's not, I didn't push as hard as I think I should yet, but there we go. We, we've got the gist of it. All right. Hello again, kitty. Come to see, oh, uh, you've come to see the board. You've come to see the board. A great reveal, the board. Let's see, there's some paper here. Keeping it nice and safe. There we go. We've got our board. Yes, look at that. Isn't that swanky? Yes, there's Cusco with the Saxe Waman, which is where the Incas begin. The Coricancha, which is where the Spanish begin. We've got the Machu Picchu up here. All of the cities along the way. All the little uh, squares also along the way. The little meeple should fit on any of these spaces. Oh, wow, yeah, perfect fit, just like I designed it. Even the smallest, let's say, which is here, is enough to welcome a, a meeple. No problem. These are darker, which is by design. It's the, it's the very last step until you reach the Machu Picchu. That's something special happens here, as per the rules. So yeah, there we go. And fun fact, uh, this picture, and this picture, and this picture, and even the stone, the stonework here. All these are pictures that I took myself on my trip. I applied some filters to make them look a little blurry and like I oilified them. And uh, the uh, and the background, the whole background is actually uh, from Google Maps. Let's not tell anybody. And uh, yes, we've got the Incan flag here, the modern Incan flag, which is not to be confused with the gay pride flag. Um, but uh, yeah, there you go. Uh, and yeah, there's the, the space where the dice go. It is indeed the exact, it's the perfect size for these dice. Sweet! Nice board. Uh, I was hoping for a rectangular board. They just don't have that. It's not one of their options. They do have it, but it's a, uh, it's a six-fold board. It's a huge board. Price went up, and uh, it was going to be much bigger for no reason. This was just the right size, even though I was hoping for a square, uh, for a rectangle rather, th rather than a square. I'm stuck with that, and I'm quite happy with it. I was able to fit everything that I wanted. Same little note about the campfire smell. And, oh, we have another little rivet piece here that was out of his bag. 
and uh, the instruction manual. Let's see. It's it's not it, it's it's readable. It's readable. Yes. Yes. Now they do not have any sort of tool to help you design that. You have to make your first page as a PDF all by yourself. Then your second page as a PDF all by yourself. Your third page, etc. So once all of your pages are designed, you upload them to the Game Crafter. So yes, it was quite a huge task of um, of uh, you know uh, formatting to build all of that. Background color of my pages is perhaps a bit darker than I hoped, but it's fine. It doesn't make the text hard to read. It's perfectly fine. Perfectly fine. Yeah, look at that. That's beautiful. Now, uh, I have not tried just putting my rules into somebody's hands and say, and say, go, go ahead and try to learn the game, see if my rules are, are clear enough, if they make sense. I don't know. Didn't try yet. Obviously, I didn't because the game just, game just came through the mail. So, uh, but that's something that I will want to do, see if the game is clear enough. If the rules are clear enough. And there we go. Fun fact, all of this here, this last section is, as the title says, about the Inca, so it's all a bunch of fun facts. This is all completely useless for playing the actual game, uh, but it's something that I thought I, I would put in there. I had some free space at the end, so I went ahead and I included some, uh, some trivia. And wow, yeah, look at that. And here we go. We have Inca Trail here. A very expensive game if you intend to just make and buy a single copy. But uh, if, um, if testing, if further testing goes well, then um, yeah, we're talking mass produce, we're talking Chinese um, um, uh, crafters, makers, what have you. And we're also talking giant kitty cats who will uh, no doubt have fun throwing little meeples off the table. No, she doesn't do that. She, she doesn't throw things off the table. She, she hardly throws herself off the table even. Uh, well, there you go. And um, uh, gee, I don't know. I'm excited. I'm very excited. I don't know when I'll get a chance to actually play uh, a game with my uh, prototype. But uh, next I will punch out everything, I'll stick all the stickers on the dice, I, don't, I won't do that in front of the camera, not to bore you. Um, but uh, yeah, there we go. Uh, I'm sure that uh, I'll make some demos of the game, uh, especially if this whole Kickstarter plan um, comes to fruition. Obviously you guys will, will want to see what it's about. But it's a lot of fun. It's... Uh, well, no, no, it's... It's stupidly boring. It's it's it, it's the worst game ever. Of course, it's fun. I mean, why would I, why would I say that? It's obviously fun. Otherwise, I wouldn't have gone to the trouble. But um, some of the games that I, I played, like three games, at least two out of three, the game was extremely um, uh, high in suspense. Were we going to win? Um, were we about to lose uh, at the very last second? We were always on the brink. Um, typical of a good co-op game, you never quite know if you're going to pull through. Uh, there's a high degree of suspense. Uh, one of my three games, uh, there was no suspense at all. I don't know, we, we were lucky, we were just that good, I don't know what it was, but we just aced through the game. And sometimes that, that does happen with the best co-op games, but... Um, it's even better if uh, you just don't quite know if you're going to win and you win on the last possible turn, uh, which is what usually happens um, on my game. So, uh, yes, it, uh, it rekindles the, uh, the best uh, suspenseful uh, moments of, uh, of Pandemic and other games of that genre. So, I'll talk to you later. I'll uh, give... I'll, uh, I'll let this uh, air out a bit um, before the whole campfire smell threatens to overpower the apartment here. All right, take care, um, and I'll see you, I'll see you guys later. Et uh, oui, en français, je vais sûrement en faire des démonstrations et on s'en parlera uh, en français comme en anglais. All right, take care, bye.